Hello everyone, my name is Nessa Rocks and welcome to my channel. It's been two years. Welcome back to my face. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hi guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Hi guys. Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about rejection. this screening video. So today I want to talk about my PRP. Over the last six weeks I've been talking about my friend's projects but I've not mentioned my own and there was good reason for that. So a PRP is a project that you work on of your own accord at uni and it's based on a topic that you find really interesting or you want to improve your skills in. And for me I chose YouTube. So this channel over the last six weeks has been my project. Surprise! <laughs> my project has been focused on the question, can you crack the YouTube algorithm or can you learn how to use it and how to best improve your channel? So to start with, I want to explain where the idea for this project all stemmed from. Back in 2015, I decided to make VIDA, which stands for Video Every Day in August. And I made these videos of my own accord, off the top of my head, what I thought would be fun to make based on no algorithm, no pre-planning, just whatever I felt like creating that day. And I did intend to keep this up, but unfortunately moving to university meant that I lost the spare time to make these videos. But when the opportunity came to start my channel up again and to look into it in real depth, I got very excited and I jumped at the chance. For my project, I've been looking at how the algorithm works. I decided to use YouTube analytics and the algorithm to try and decipher the code and the magic formula for YouTube. The analytics on the website have meant that I can track my channel in real time and make adjustments to this living project that has been evolving ever since I decided to do it. YouTube analytics are the graphs and charts that YouTube provides you which are statistics about your channel which will help you improve and grow. The first half of this project was a presentation where I outlined my research and my reasons for wanting to do this project which I will link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube for you to look into my project in more depth. But as a quick summation of that, if you're watching this at the screening and cannot click on the description, I decided to use surveys and my own existing knowledge of YouTube and kind of merge them together to see if that was enough to crack YouTube. Through those surveys, as a base point for my videos, I discovered that a lot of people enjoy watching vlogs, which are kind of what I'm doing now, talking to the camera about everyday life, uh, musical videos, so covers, original songs, things like that, and on top of everything else, the videos need to be funny and engaging. So those are the three things that I tried to incorporate into my channel when I first started it. First started it up again. Now like I said before, my surveys and my research have hugely informed how I've made my videos, but a new discovery that I found during making the videos was the YouTube Creative Studio. The Creative Studio is where you find YouTube analytics and information about your channel down to watch time, audience engagement, your subscriber count. It even tells you what device your viewers are watching your channel on, which are all really informative in issues like exporting videos and how best to promote them and things like that. So that's been a real help as well throughout this project that I didn't realise would be as helpful in the beginning stages. The reason I bring up my channel in 2015 is that I want to compare it to how my channel has progressed now with the knowledge that I have about YouTube. Take subscriber counts for example. In 2015 I gained 18 subscribers over the period of making videos but I lost 3 subscribers in that process as well. Compared to now I've gained 18 subscribers again which is a really odd echo but I've only lost one subscriber. That's the kind of improvement that I've been looking for from this project. The comparison of demographics shows that in 2015 my demographic was more aimed at 18 to 24 year olds but now in 2018 I'm reaching a lot more 25 to 34 year old people. In 2015 my channel got one share 
over the few weeks I was creating videos, whereas this time around it's gained 20 shares and that's something that's really helped as well in the promotion side. Something that I found as well is promotion is something that really helps a YouTube channel grow. I made a Facebook page to promote my videos, post the links to the channel and encourage people to watch. And this is really reflected in my analytics. Around times where there are big spikes in views tend to be when I've promoted the channel on my Facebook page. Now in 2015, I made a video called An Awkward Duet with Cara. It was a duet of a smaller YouTuber's song that I did with my friend. And this video has got 7,000 views when the average on my channel is about 100 including this project and it's something I haven't been able to recreate with this project because it goes to show that no matter how much you research the algorithm of YouTube and you look at your analytics, sometimes there are outliers that you just don't understand because I to this day do not understand why that video is so popular. I think a factor in it may be the comment section because this video has got around 20 comments on it whereas other videos have got a maximum of about five. That must have had a factor into it but beyond that I have no idea. So my first video back is called Back Making Videos and I decided to make this very chatty and conversational. I decided it would fit into the category of vlogs that people have told me they enjoyed watching but it also had to be informative and a reintroduction to my channel. Now from my own knowledge of YouTube, I knew that weekly videos and series were things that bring me back to watch a channel. And so I decided to include two of these into my upload schedule. One of these series was gonna be a weekly catch up video, again, to feed the vlog need for my channel and also to keep people updated on what I was doing and to make my channel more engaging and more relatable. The first of these being the almost famous video that I uploaded about the London trip. Now something I noticed about this video was it was a lot longer than the first one I'd uploaded. The first being about three and a half minutes and this one being around eight minutes. And that was something that was really interesting to see reflected in my analytics. As you can see, around the time I uploaded the first video, the back making videos, video. My average view duration was about a minute and a half, but when I uploaded the almost famous one, the average view duration dropped to just 20 seconds. And I really believe that's to do with the length of the video and the audience being less engaged with the video itself. And from this, I decided that my videos in the future will be on the shorter side. After I did change the timings of my videos to be shorter, my average watch time on my channel went up and now it's sitting at about two and a half minutes at a time which is a vast improvement from 22 seconds. But I wouldn't have been able to make the changes I've made to my channel without the YouTube analytics. The second series I decided to do was called One Take Music. I decided to make these videos because I found from my research that people enjoy watching music videos and I play the ukulele and want to get better at it. So I thought I would kill two birds with one stone. I did these videos in one take as I thought it would make them shorter and easier to upload and I could get more content out in one go. That fact was also informed by my upload schedule. Through my upload schedule, I decided to mimic a successful YouTube channel's progress. I began my channel using my own camera, which is a Canon 600D and the original lens it came with and no audio recording equipment, no lights, I just spoke to my camera and used that footage. The last video I uploaded was in 2015 before I came to university and it was a cover of the song Little Rome. I also uploaded once a week for about two weeks just to kind of get my footing with videos, decide how I wanted to make them and also so I could increase the number as I went on. I really feel that throughout this project, if you look through the videos I've created for it, you can really see an improvement in the production value and the quality of the videos because I've started using better lenses, lighting equipment and audio recording equipment to make myself sound and look better and up to the standard of today's big YouTubers. The amount of videos I've uploaded has also been informed by my analytics because you can see that as I've uploaded more videos in a short amount of time, more people have stayed engaged with my channel and watched my videos for longer. I wanted this channel to be a real reflection of me as a person and that is why I uploaded videos like Soul's Law and Rejection. These videos were made when I was not feeling my best and I was not feeling up to making the videos but I still felt it was important to reflect that people in YouTube videos are just real people. We're just trying to make content that we're proud of and sometimes that's hard to do, regardless of what knowledge you have of the algorithm or your analytics. 
as my channel went on, I decided to do a few collaborative videos, or collabs as they're called in the YouTube world, with a few of my friends. I kept these quite musical themed as well, seeing as that's what people wanted to see from me. And these videos were the Musical Whisper Challenge with Claire, and the improv songs with Matt, Jordan and Keenan. But that's the beauty of this project, is that I'm not here to give you a definitive answer or description of the YouTube algorithm because it's an ever-changing thing and I will continue to work to see if there is a way that I one day will be able to bring you a definitive answer. So to answer my own question from the start of this project, I haven't cracked the code yet and I don't know that I'm anywhere near to it, but that is something I look forward to further exploring and seeing if I can one day crack. I said crack all in this video. And algorithm and analytics. Those words mean nothing to me anymore. I guess it's time to talk about the conclusions I've come to so far in this project. I say so far because, like I said before, this project is a living thing. You can even see your YouTube analytics refreshing every 10 seconds in real time. And because of that, this is something that I really want to keep going with, to keep using the information that I've learned throughout this project to better my channel and keep making videos. This project has taught me that being a YouTuber is a lot harder than it seems on the surface. There's so much that goes into making videos behind the scenes. There's so much that goes into making even a single video for your channel. There's obviously the content, but there's the promotion, there's all of the work that goes into researching your own channel before you continue to create videos. So, as ever, if you liked the video, please like it. If you like my face, please subscribe below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. This is your outro song. That's the wrong.